Hey guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Welcome back. We've got something a little different for you guys today. Uh, we're reviewing the new E-Flight V22 Osprey. You know, with the advent of the quadcopter technology and the miniaturization of all of that, you know, it really opens up some great opportunities for a model like this. And you know, it's pretty awesome, I have to say. A tilt rotor is an extremely difficult challenge to overcome in full scale. So imagine what it would take to truly scale that down in miniature. Well, you know, E-Flight, they've leveraged their vast experience in VTOL aircraft and really put something together that is simple and effective right out of the box. Not to mention, it just looks incredibly cool in the air. Now, the, the full-scale V-22 is a pretty amazing aircraft that really is just an incredible technological achievement to come into full-scale production. It did have a few teething problems during development, but you know the aircraft is commonplace now, uh, and I see them flying quite regularly around town since you know they operate out of Miramar. I can tell you it's such a unique looking and sounding aircraft to see in the air. Anyhow, let's get into it guys and let you know the details on this cool little airplane. So, let's go! Now, this is the bind and fly version of the V-22. So in terms of what you get in the box, you know, it's the airplane ready to go with the included accessories. Uh, and all you need is a spectrum transmitter and a 3S flight battery. It's firmly packaged in the box uh, and you're greeted with the unmistakable Osprey shape as you open it all up. Also in the box are a set of fixed removable landing gear uh, along with the instructions and a big assortment of markings. It's painted in a nice two-tone camouflage which looks decent and the shape looks about spot on to me. Uh, there weren't really any recommendations in the instructions for where the markings go. So, you know, I did a little online research and, you know, just kind of put something whimsical together that I liked based on what was it on the marking sheet. Now with the Osprey on the bench, it, it's such a cool looking little aircraft. They've done a great job with it. It's set up with, you know, the two wingtip rotors uh, with fixed pitch props along with a third fan in the tail, which essentially makes it a tricopter in the hover mode, uh, similar to the E-Flight Convergence designs. This really simplifies the, the hover mode and also allows E-Flight to leverage their existing technology, which is smart. Uh, it has removable fixed gear uh, and the nose wheel is cast ring. So with the differential thrust on the ground, uh, you can actually steer it. Now the finish looks good and with some markings on, definitely makes it look the part pretty well. Uh, there is some foam texture coming through on this one, uh, so it's not the smoothest aircraft I've played with, but it's not too bad either. Uh, you really only notice it in harsh overhead lighting. Oh, and one other thing to note, it has a connection for FPV. If that's something you'd like to play with, I can imagine you know, it'd be pretty fun with this little aircraft. So in terms of the setup, there's really not too much uh, that you have to do, but there are some things that are worth talking about. You know, first of all, for the bind and fly, the instructions for the radio setup are on page four of the manual. Follow those and you'll be good to go. I set up everything per the book and didn't mess with it after that. You know, E-Flight recommends setting the rates at 100% for high and 70% for low with 10% expo on everything. I'm using a DX18, which has triple rates. Uh, so I set 100% for high, 85% for mid and 70% for low. Uh, I flew most of my flights with the mid to high rates, so just a heads up there. Now the way that the rates work is a little non-traditional, uh, but also this isn't a traditional airplane either. Adjusting the rates doesn't change the max travel on the servo like you would expect. Uh, what it does is it changes the servo response time through delay, which I found kind of interesting. So in other words, the controls at 100% uh, will get to the endpoints quicker than the controls at 70%. So just be aware of that if you're adjusting the rates and don't see a change to the surface, that's physically what's happening on the model. I'm sure this is all based on the configuration and what's necessary for that. Now the other thing to talk about are the flight modes. E-Flight recommends setting this up on a six channel system, uh, which are necessary for the flight modes and setting up a throttle cut. The flight modes consist of the hover mode where the Osprey flies pretty much just like a quadcopter, a stability mode which transitions to four flight and then we'll bank and pitch limit the aircraft kind of like safe does and then full acro mode uh, which also transitions the airplane uh, but also removes the angle limits allowing you to perform vertical and rolling maneuvers 
Uh, this is all described in the instructions and I highly recommend just setting the vehicle up as they state, it's simple uh, and it works. Okay, so the last thing is CG. Uh, again, this is all per the manual which shows 25 to 30 millimeters as measured from the wing root leading edge aft. I'm at about the 30 millimeter mark with the recommended 3S 800 milliamp hour battery placed in about one quarter inch aft of the front part of the battery bay and it flies well there. All right, so now how does this thing fly? I can tell you it flies really well. You know, E-Flight has done a great job at making a challenging aircraft simple to fly. You know, the hover is super stable and easy to maneuver flying basically like a quadcopter. So if you have some heli or quad experience, it'll be super easy to pick up. Having the airplane shape on there, you know, really helps with the orientation, I can tell you that. I did the initial hover test uh, out in front of my house and seeing it in the air, I was literally giggling like a little schoolgirl. It was so cool. Uh, now, with regards to the transition, this is all handled automatically through the flip the flight mode switch, uh, which makes it really simple. It's important to be patient on the switch as I do recommend keeping it in stability mode until the Osprey is fully transitioned to forward flight uh, and then going into the acro mode if that's what you want to do. Uh, this will just help ensure things transition as smooth as possible. Also, it's best to have the Osprey stabilized straight and level with minimal transmitter inputs uh, before initiating the transition. It is worth mentioning that I did notice on this one uh, that it was yawing to the right in the transition and that ended up being a result of the nacelles uh, being slightly asymmetric. So definitely check that out of the box and fix it if you notice that they are off. Uh, I simply just adjusted the, the servo push rod length on the one side to get the two nacelles to align, which really smoothed that out. The asymmetry did make for a couple interesting transitions initially, and actually that first one didn't quite work out too well. So definitely check that on yours uh, and square it up if you need to. The wing comes off really easily with two screws, so it's really easy to adjust those push rods. Now, once in forward flight, you have a fully functioning airplane here. It's such a unique shape to see in the air with those dual wingtip rotors and I was really digging it. This little guy has fantastic power and good responsiveness in acro mode for basic aerobatics like rolls uh, and verticals which is really all you need. It is small and quick so you do have to stay ahead of it a little bit uh, but I didn't find it hard to fly at all. That said I do recommend some decent aircraft proficiency uh, before going into full acro mode. That's where the option of the stability mode is really nice. You know, flying it around, I was really having a good time doing big vertical maneuvers and variations of rolls in addition to just flying it around. Uh, but it does get small pretty quick. Oh, and you know, I actually even did a touch and go in the forward flight, uh, which was pretty fun too. And then the last thing to mention, you know, the transition from forward flight uh, back to hover was super easy and the Osprey handles it without a problem. Okay, so here's a quick video of the Osprey in flight. If you'd like to see the full uncut video, you can click the icon in the upper right corner. They've got a link there. Check it out, guys, and then we'll wrap this up. Oh, 
All right, there we have it guys, the E-Flight V-22. You know, it, it's just something else, I tell you what. It's such a cool piece of RC technology that looks good and flies well. Uh, it's such a fun concept to have in RC and is no doubt guaranteed a unique addition to the hangar. Now I do recommend having some aircraft proficiency before going into acro mode for best success. You know, you do have the option of the stability mode if you're, you're not there yet. Just make sure if you're flying in stability mode uh, that you're using the 100% dual rates for the most responsive setup. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. You know, if you would have asked me five years ago if we would have had a V-22 available commonplace at the field, I probably would have doubted the feasibility. But we're there, guys, and the technology that goes into it uh, just really opens up so many opportunities. So enjoy it. All right, so that's it, guys. Until next time, I'll see you at the field.